over the last couple of days, not over the last few weeks, actually, I've learned that this new thing that I legitimately never knew existed beforehand, legitimately never knew this existed beforehand. And maybe some of you guys listening have a better idea of this than I do. So I found out there's this thing called TikTok techno. Um, I kind of saw it in some regard. There'll be these these DJs who post clips of themselves playing songs that they like um, under the premise of techno. And it's usually not. Or you'll see those dudes and girls putting on certain outfits that they wear to a club. But now there's this whole entire scene and subculture of these TikTok, te TikTok techno influencers who I've now learned sometimes get hired by flipping nightclubs in Berlin to do door picking. Yes, you heard that right. So in Berlin, as most of you know, they take, you know, techno over there very, very seriously. And they have this thing that they do where essentially at all clubs, they have somebody in the door. Sometimes it's a bouncer. Sometimes it's an actual designated door picker who's basically in charge of cultivating or curating the vibe inside and making sure that they permit um, the right people in there who are going to get what's going on, not make it weird and just be a general good vibes in there. And they take it very, very seriously. And obviously the best example example of that is Bergheim but every other club in Berlin does it. everyone that's that's halfway decent and basically what I've learned in the last few days is that these influencers these TikTok techno influencers some of them have like you know over a hundred thousand flipping um, followers and stuff they're now being hired by some of these nightclubs over there in Berlin to do door picking under the guise of maybe they're well known and people will come down to see them I'm not really too sure I don't really get it because I don't think I've ever gone to a nightclub legitimately thinking oh this this and that is going to be at the door sometimes with certain promotions there'll be a certain person at the door that you see a lot so a certain you know night uh, would have you know maybe a, a guy or a girl that you kind of recognize all the time but you never ever go there because of them you go there because of the dj you go there because of the party because of the club but it's never because we someone at the door so this is a whole new world we're in now at the moment it's a different sort of world and one of the people that everyone's kind of talking about is this young lady called julia wolf who's been causing a little bit of controversy within my little scene and people in Bergheim have been really, really hating her because recently she filmed a video of herself inside of Bergheim on the dance floor, a video showing, you know, a couple of arms, a couple of feet, nothing too crazy. But if you know anything about Bergheim and about burning clubs in general, once you go there and you put, they put the sticker on your phone, you're not meant to record anything on the inside. It's not permitted at all to record any videos or anything. In some cases, they don't like it if you flip and talk about it. Like I've had some people make comments on my Bergheim videos or clips and stuff that I put up on my channel when I spoke about it on the podcast. And some of them haven't really liked the fact that I've reviewed my own experience going in there with absolutely no images, no names, no deals of people whatsoever. So if people take that stuff really seriously. So you can imagine what these girls, what these people feel like when this influencer girl rocked up and decided to film um, herself in there um, with her friends. And then, of course, I think the backlash from this was quite, you know, fast and fierce. People were sending the clip all over the place. I think certain people send the clips to people in management over at Bergheim, which is super narc behavior. You know, I'm not for that in the slightest, but hey, you got to do what you got to do, protect your space. And then I think some people were leaving some comments on the Instagram and she's been going through them, deleting them and stuff and basically not taking accountability for it, not saying sorry and just living her influence her life. But the other part of it is that they do this thing that also is weird, right? This is a clip taken from my TikTok where they basically show you um, doing outfits that they would wear. So this is a thing as well now. Outfits you're going to wear when you go to flipping clubs and stuff. And let me click a random one. Let's click this one. It's got like 1.26 million. So this is essentially an outfit, right, to go to Bergheim. Let's see what they say here. Or there's two here. There's one and this one. Let's do... No, let's do this one. Let's do this. Let's do that one. Let's do the other one. And you'll see what I mean. But essentially, they stand in front of the camera, talk about what outfit they're going to wear. This is going to be all in German. So if you don't understand German, you're going to get it. If you don't, you don't. Come on, Julia. Give us, give us, give us the lowdown, babes. Ich bin abends ins Bergheim und nehme dafür ein Outfit. Im Video hierfür habe ich schon den Rock fertig gemacht. Und jetzt versuche ich noch ein Oberteil zu machen. Ich wickele mich dafür in Frischhaltefolie ein. Weil ich versuche auf der Frischhaltefolie ein Schmüdelmuster zu malen. Weil ich weiß sonst einfach nicht, wie ich das machen soll. Und das ist das Einzige, wie ich meine eigene Körperform auf Papier bekomme. So, also If you're not... Ich habe mir überlegt, dass ich dann hier so... If you're not watching it, she's, I don't know, she's covering herself with, um, what should we call it, with cling film over her top. I'm not too sure what this is about, but let me just see as it goes on. And then she's marking it with a pen. Oh, she's, okay, she's going to create a top out of cling film. Interesting, to wear inside of a club, which is legitimately the worst material ever I can imagine to wear inside a sweaty club. But let's see how it goes. 
dass es hier frei ist. Und ich mag das auch mit den Schnürungen. Vielleicht mache ich da auch so eine Bänder dran. Erstmal wieder rausschnippeln. Welch ein Abenteuer. Das ist meine Titte. Eine Titte in Klarsichtfolie. Und die übertrage ich jetzt auf ein Blatt Papier. Alter, ich mach das so smart, Junge. Okay, she's got, she's got the pattern now in cling film and she's gonna... Oh, okay, she's got the pattern now she's gonna Natürlich. cut it, I think. Kann man da jetzt durchgucken? Ja. Oh, she's gonna transfer into paper. Okay. So wäre jetzt ungefähr der Abdruck und den mache ich jetzt einfach zweimal auf dem Stoff. Schneide ich jetzt einfach mal aus meine tolle Nilvorlage. Tata! Und dann lege ich hier den Stoff doppelt. Dann now she's got some material to cut it out of. Oh, okay, sorry. Hier drauf. Checkt ihr, wenn ich... I got it completely wrong. She used the cling film as a as a sort of um I forgot that material, but there's a particular material people use when they're making um when they're making first drafts of clothes. It's kind of like I forgot what it's called. It's sort of like a creamy type of color material. It's like a cheap basically. You use that to basically make the shapes and how you want it to kind of look, and then obviously you use that to then cut onto the actual. You use that as a pattern to cut onto the actual material that you want to use. I forgot the name of it, but that's what she used the cling film for. But now she's cutting onto actual material. When I put it on, then there are two sides, and I cut it on the natural with a knife. Can you imagine that this is already so anhalten and can you imagine that this is already so anhalten and can you imagine that this is already so anhalten and can you imagine that this is already so anhalten and can you imagine that this is already so anhalten and can you imagine that this is already und außen und den legen wir jetzt. Yeah, that's it. I think that's it. Muslin. Thank you, Fifth Keith. I think it's Muslin. I think you're right. I think it's Muslin. So basically, she used the cling film as Muslin. I thought she was used. She was gonna make the top out of cling film and take that to a club. That's insane. But yeah, she used the cling film as a substitute for Muslin and then used the pattern on the cling film to put onto paper to then put onto fabric and now she's gonna be putting it together. I'm assuming. Schön auf schön aufeinander. Oh, that moment, wenn das alles so schön passt. Oh, endlich mal. Und dann noch die Träger rein. Dafür habe ich jetzt hier vier Gummibänder, die ich jeweils verknotet habe, damit die nicht verrutschen. Einmal durch die Öffnung hier durchgefädelt und so gucken die jetzt raus. Ich bin Loki aufgeregt. So, it's a, it's a really, really small bra top made out of some material. Und unten natürlich offen lässt, dreht man das dann um. Und dann hat man nämlich schön von außen und innen und das sitzt dann hier so. Es ist cool geworden. Jetzt nehme ich mir hier die Maße von meinem Brustkorb und das sind 75 cm. Etwa 77 cm langes Stück Stoff. Doppelt legen, schön auf schön. Let's continue again with the und okay, cool. Now let's see the next bit. I think there's a 2.0. I think it's this one, right? There we go. It's 2.0. I think this is the next bit. Was that the same one? That's another one. Ich werde abends Bergkanon nehmen dafür ein Outfit. Im Video hier habe ich schon den Rockfeld. Let's fold it. Das ist so smart, Junge. It's the same one. Whoops. Anyway, you get the gist. You get the gist, right? So she made a top. And then she does other stuff like get going out, stuff like this, with makeup. Get ready with me for Brutalismus 3000 in Bergart. Die, die alle immer so feiny, feiny fragen. Ja, ich gehe jedes Wochenende feiern und ich kriege mein Leben trotzdem wunderbar unter Kontrolle. Danke der Nachfrage. Ich muss sie As you can see, more und things. Ich mit Kumpel, der mich mitnimmt. She's putting her makeup on, looking the way that she looks, blah, 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 blah. Jetzt noch meine Signature Frisur. Right. And then the ja, end result. So Video seht ihr mein Mainz. Is what we see there. Cool, right? Everything's going great. Amazing. Everyone loves it. But I guess now we're in this kind of interesting place when it comes to techno, when it comes to club culture, because essentially it's now become hmm, somewhat mainstream. And obviously there's a whole new generation of kids coming up who are also becoming fans of it in their own way. These whole Gen, Gen Z kids are kind of, you know, maybe approaching it from a different way than maybe past generations have. Or maybe, sorry, just see it in a different light or maybe don't take it as seriously or maybe take it seriously in their own way. But essentially this girl and her, you know, and other people like her have a very um, bad reputation out there in the scene so far. There are reports of people basically seeing them out and about and, you know, they've acted a certain way. They weren't very respectful. There's reports of them doing the thing. You see a lot sometimes in places like Bergheim where you'll see crews of really, really cool kids and stuff who will basically go around just kind of, you know, existing in their own little bubble, kind of pushing past people and just being very obstinate and just kind of, you know, being not the most... um you know the, the most friendliest vibes um when they're in this sort of spaces and usually people don't necessarily respond the well to these sort of things at all when they're in there um and it definitely isn't bloody um one of those things that you'd like and i've got a report here someone posted on reddit i'm not too sure if this is true or not so i'm not going to put up on the screen but somebody posted this reddit um allegedly kind of speaking about how this julia girl and people like her are in the scene so this is allegedly something what happened again it's all alleged this probably didn't happen it maybe is a bit of an exaggerated story and usually when people tell stories like this they usually leave out the part they usually leave out what they did what wrong in this situation i would assume if you think about it so let's just double check this and see what's the deal is um let me see if i can get this up on here yeah so th this is a story coach to somebody on reddit they said the following i'm not from berlin 
I'm from Madrid, Spain, and I was in Berlin this weekend on March 25th. I went with my best friend because it was his birthday and we wanted to spend the weekend in the city to celebrate, not just party. We had tickets to Club Ost for the sesh party and when we arrived, there was no other people in the line. There was a huge line, but for people that didn't have tickets. And Julia told us that with a disgusting face, no, you can get in, get out of here and then proceeded to spit on the, uh, spit in front of us on the ground which i considered quite unnecessary and disrespectful we asked about a refund and she said i'll refund you and then i would head home to the airport back where you're from if i were you <laughs> we felt de- devastated we love techno since always we are quite pe- we are quiet people in line always and we always leave our phones even in madrid in the hoodies or our coats in a cloakroom because we go to clubbing we just want to feel the music and dance because we really love it and be treated like them and, and to be treated like that made us super sad after we were walking back to the metro when we saw about blank which is another club in berlin we tried to get in as a plan b and oh my god the bouncers there were so nice and polite we got in after a short nice chat we spent from 1 a.m until midday there and we had the time of our lives met amazing people from berlin and from other places had a wonderful time in general so at least things got better and we went to trezor and aiden for the rest of the weekend bloody hell they got it in got in both and respected everything and everyone just fine but yeah that was our experience with this person so we're talking about rocking up to a club this lady's at the door they say hey we've got tickets can we come in she says no even though you have tickets which happens sometimes in berlin to be fair it's a bit of a weird space and then she decides to spit on the floor and then when they ask for refunds um she then tells them i'll get you one but then when i give it to you you must go home straight away you can't even go to another club leave right now you are not welcome here berlin says nine in general the whole city said nine not even the club the whole city then to make matters worse, right? To make matters worse, if you, if you, thought, if you thought I was being hyperbolic and you're like, oh, Agostino, you care too much about this stuff. This is stupid. Um, who cares? This is just your little nonsense thing. You're just making something out of nothing. If you thought that was the case, how about this then? Tass, that, Tass Spiegel, right? One of the big papers out there in Germany put out an entire fucking article about this girl. <laughs> <laughs> right Taz Spiegel look at that an entire article it's translated from German German to English so it won't be directly good tra- translation but just give you a rough idea the heading says as follows dancing ban for TikTok ravers wanted profile distributed to all bouncers in Berlin a so-called TikTok raver claims that she and her guild will be denied access in Berlin clubs in the future what is TikTok raver we clarify so it's got to the point it's got to the point where they're sending memos around to clubs and telling them hey if you see this girl with over 400,000 flipping followers on tiktok and her friends out here do not let them into your establishment and it's another one too there's this other girl who i found who's similar in that kind of vein i think she's featured in the other article her name is uh leela vulcan is another one that kind of does the same sort of vibe right with these sort of ravey kind of clips and whatnot right a little bit of an Aryan princess or bigger up but going back to the article here's what it says regarding the whole tiktok thing right tiktok techno the ban on dancing also applies one week after good friday at least if you're a tiktok raver they should now be expelled from berlin clubs all year round what is a tiktok raver you ask we too we knew we too and since we the gossip editors never rave but only stand gossiping on the edge of the dance floor we take a closer look at the phenomenon the extensive research led to the following results tiktok ravers are mostly very slim very muscular very blonde and very very young people who could not come across as more boring in a dazzlingly beautiful way out of frustration about their boredom and a decision had to be made at some point during the post pubescent defiance phase a few months ago as to how more rough average could be built into their identity it's also common that these days when everyone talks about diversity but you don't well and the solution is obvious it's simple techno and that's a really good flipping um thing to say it is very interesting how all of them by default again it's not really my vibe but i guess most people would describe this girl as conventionally attractive right not really for me but i know some people would like and the same thing goes for this lady right they're all kind of conventionally attractive very slim very young very fresh faced rosy cheek type of chicks and kids who've essentially taken over an entire scene that is really full of like really bitter and entitled oldies 
So it's a really interesting clash of the ages and generation. All of these TikTok ravers are really young, virile, energetic. And, you know, just, you know, when you're young and you're flipping, when you're under flipping 25, you feel like no one else exists. Anyone over the age of 25 is basically a flipping pensioner to you. So imagine that flipping tension, that clash happening in real time all the time. You know, you've got the elite hipsters, the millennial hipsters, and you've got these Gen Z kids raving it up. It's an epic battle. It continues here. You don't have to be gifted dancer or have great taste. Sweatpants below and something on top that remotely resemble a piece of fabric. The difference is complete. <laughs> Although glasses are still missing, either with the hardware store or from the sports shop and the shoes you guessed it, either from the hardware store or from the sports shop, which I've definitely seen also. But I think that's just a tech, that's just a typical Berlin thing. People don't usually care about how they dress, but there is a distinct lack in swag and just kind of... um. I don't know, just good style overall. People just look at an absolute mess. Um, you know, as good as, as crafty as that girl was with her top, you know, she spent all that time making some shit top out of some shit fabric where she just could have bought a top from a store and used that instead. But hey, what do I know? It continues. Um, now it can start. Dance of Techno, i.e. Rave, have yourself filmed, upload on YouTube, upload on TikTok, sorry. The recipe for success of being a little crazy works and is rewarded with countless followers. Some of the ravers have even achieved something like prominence with it. Stella Boosie, for example, with over a million followers, she can ride horses into Berlin clubs and cross up a DJ or Julia Wolf, the girl we just featured. Um, a former candidate of Heidi Klum's model search show. Ra, really? This girl was a former model. Okay. She looks a bit small to be a model in that regard, isn't it? But fair play. Um, uh, she regularly shares with her almost 400,000 subscribers how she puts on a certain blush around her nose or applies her eyebrows elsewhere before going to a club, before going to Berlin on Sundays. Um, but that could be the end of it now. A certain Villa Vulcan, the other girl who I featured, tells her followers on TikTok that she has found out something really blatant. In fact, wanted letters were distributed to all bouncers in Berlin. No more TikTok ravers come to the clubs. A friend of hers is already they have been rejected because she was over 10,000 followers. It's getting very violent in Berlin. Whether it's true or not, we don't know, but somehow it doesn't matter. At least now we know what a TikTok raver is. So it's going a bit peaky out there in the streets. Um, everyone's kind of getting flustered and annoyed, but it's an interesting time we live in because I think in some respects, you can't blame the clubs for trying this because I think in a post-pandemic age, with people basically, you know, not as many people going out as it was beforehand and just you know the rising energy cost the cost of living going up fees going up brexit and whatnot operating a club operating a festival and making it profitable or just balancing the books must be extremely hard extremely extremely hard so i don't blame these guys and gals when they try and do whatever it needs to be done to kind of make it work it makes complete sense to me to be honest i don't really blame them in the slightest i think you need to kind of work it out and figure it out and hopefully 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 it can make some sense going forward and i think you know d deciding to kind of tap into the influencer stuff and get some kids on board who are part of the new generation to kind of help out um to maybe kind of fill in some of the holes of the older folks like myself who maybe have moved on or maybe slow down their raving makes a lot of sense but you can just imagine what it must be like for people who legitimately you know see Bergheim as like their their safe space where they can legitimately go and unplug from the horrors of everyday life and maybe in some respects get away from people like this to now have people like that you know these TikTok influence essentially invading your space must be really difficult to take and I know for me having been there a few times some of that kind of uneasy weird vibe I felt was essentially that tension in the dance floor going in real time the fact that Berger and these kind of places were legitimately you know essentially established for you know being a sort of quasi safe space for people within the gay lgbtq plus scene and then for them to go into a place where they're kind of being adopted by the mainstream and normies and straights like myself and then to now be in a position where all these tiktok gen z kids are coming in and infiltrating it it's probably worse than tourists it's probably way worse than chin stroke this situation because they're coming in in droves they've got money to spend um and whatnot you know it, it, it's just an absolute mess i can see why people are really really upset about it but i'm just really bemused the fact that these berlin clubs have such an attitude about how they select people but they're still the same people who are willing to try out having a flipping tiktok influencer door, door picking on the door is legitimately hilarious it legitimately makes me laugh that these same places that will go out their way to make you feel like you're not cool enough are you know having the uncoolest the uncoolest i feel like people on the door selecting some of them are flipping you know 
half the age of some people that are rocking up who have been there for flipping years denying them coming in makes me laugh to no end makes me laugh to no end but maybe this is a natural course of events and that's how it flows but yeah people were not happy at all she posted a picture or a video of herself inside of Berghain uploaded it onto her Instagram account and people were going absolutely crazy and it got reported all over the place she was deleting comments on Instagram and it seems like people are not having it in the slightest so if you do happen to see these people when, when you go out in Berlin try and avoid them as much as you can um, find your own little bubble and space to kind of dance in I think that's one of the good things about raving over there you can find your own little zone and corner to kind of have a good time in you can kind of avoid the bad vibe guys and gals but if you do see them run a mile run a flipping mile or the vibe of your night will be ruined I guarantee it 